In this episode, we're going to get back to work on this K20, K24 Frank motor that I'm building. Uh, we're going to, going to lap the valves on the K20A2 head. Uh, I've never done this before. Uh, I watched a couple videos on it, got some materials off Amazon. I might put the links to the stuff I got down below. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I talked to a couple of people that have done it before as well, and they all recommended that I pay somebody to do it because they said it's a pain in the ass. So. Uh, we'll see how we make out. Uh, I don't really want to pay anybody to do something that I can do myself. Uh, so yeah, let's see how we make out. Alright, so this is what I ended up getting to lap the valves. Uh, a lapping tool kit. There's a part number there. It's kind of a universal one. It's got a whole bunch of different size suction cups on it for valves. So hopefully one of those works. And then some Permatex valve grinding compound. So we'll get set up here and see what we can do. This is what we're trying to get rid of. I don't know if you can see it here. Yeah, there you go. See the pits, the pitting around the valve seat right in this area here? That's what we're trying to get rid of. So these are the exhaust valves. They're usually more prone to it than intake valves, but the intake valves have got some as well. So we're going to go through all these and see what we can get done. So let me get set up and we'll come back in a minute. Okay. So that's how the suction cup attaches to the valve. Seems to attach okay, and then you just put your lapping compound on the seat down here and just work it back and forth. Uh, this is our lapping compound, so we're going to put some on here. This is the first one, so we will see how it goes. Wish me luck. I have no idea what a good amount is, so I'll put that amount on. I think the key with this is you don't want to get any of this lapping compound onto here or into your valve uh, guide because it'll just chew it up. So let's see here. Grindy, holy moly. Now we're going to turn it a quarter turn and continue on. Okay, now you can noticeably tell the difference in sound. See how it looks. 
So you can kind of see that dull silver gray area. That's the part that got lapped. So there's no more pits or anything on it like there used to be. Okay, so here's kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. So the one on the left is the one that I just lopped, and the one on the right is the one that has not been lopped. So you can see the one on the left is kind of got a uniform gray uh, texture to it, and this one is kind of polished and you can see those black dots, those pits that aren't on this one. So as far as I understand, that's what we're going for. That's what we want to have. So yeah, success. Uh, so one thing I didn't uh, do on the first couple was put a little dab of oil on the, the tip of the valve where it goes through the valve guide. So probably a good idea to have something like because this is dry so I don't want to uh, damage the valves or the valve stems or the valve guides so a shot. so as I'm doing this I'm doing a, a few rotations and then lifting it up turning it a quarter turn and back down again just so it gets an even grind all the way around the valve seat. All right, I just wanted to pop in here a couple days later. Um, <clears throat> uh, one thing that I didn't cover before I started with this is that the valve that you grind to the particular valve seat needs to stay in that one. So you can't take a valve from exhaust number six and put it in number one once you're done grinding, uh, doing a valve lap, because those two, the valve and the seat are married to each other once you do that valve lap. Uh, so you need to keep them in order. You need to work your way front to back, back to front, however it is. And you need to have your valves organized in a way that you're able to know which goes where. So this is what I use on mine. I'll just show you quickly. I've got this crane cams um, cylinder head kit. So I've got everything laid out in here. Valve springs, retainers, clips, lost motion assemblies, everything like that. And I work my way down the head this way. So this is the front. It's actually marked on here front. So that's the front of my head working its way down. So that's how I keep things organized. I just wanted to cover that off um, in case nobody's ever done this before and they're using this as a guide. I'm not a professional, I'm just a home hobbyist. This isn't a detailed how-to. Um, if you're uncomfortable doing this or have never done this before, I don't suggest doing it. I myself have never done this before, but I'm willing to take the risk and learn and hopefully share some of it with you guys. So. With that said, we're going to start on the exhaust side now, um, and we will get those knocked out tonight. So there we have it. Uh, we have uh, officially lapped all 16 valves on this uh, K20A2 head. Um, they all look good. Uh, there was one exhaust that I needed to go back and redo a little bit because you could still see a little bit of pitting in one of the seats. So I went back and did that off camera. Um, the head is now ready to get the valves installed. Um, 
but I've got kind of a dilemma right now. I've got the stock valve springs and retainers here for this head, but in the head that's in my car now, I've got uh, Supertech uh, Beehive valve springs and titanium retainers. Um, and I'm honestly kind of thinking I want to have those in this motor because this motor is probably going to be <clears throat> driven a little bit harder. The, the red line won't be the same, but uh, I've got really good components in my motor that's coming out and I want to put them into this one. So there might be, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this actually because I want to keep this motor running in here now. I don't want to pull it out right now and tear it down. I want to do one more event on this setup in the new class that I run in. Um, and then tear it down uh, or pull it out and put this K24, K20 uh, Frank motor in it. So uh, the